I know everyone is uploading their book hauls, stacking up on books for that quarantine that's coming up, or for some people, has already come up. But I've been doing that my entire life, and this channel is proof of it. So I brought you a book review instead. Hi everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Pregnant Diaz. A long time ago, I discovered the Goldsmiths Prize. It is a prize specifically awarded to experimental UK fiction. And I was obsessed with it and I planned to read all the short lists um, from 2013 to 2018, I believe. That never happened, but I have continued to read some of the books because I'm still very much interested in the prize. My relationship with experimental fiction has changed. I used to really, really love it, and now I do appreciate it, but I'm much more critical. I sometimes think it can get very gimmicky, and I don't have a lot of patience for that, but when it's well done, I really enjoyed it. So this is a joint review of three books. The first one is A Line Made by Walking by Sarah Baum. I read this such a long time ago. It was one of my favorite books of that year. If I talked about it in a yearly wrap up, I will leave that link down below and in the eye as always. I still think about this book all the time, which I think is amazing and it's probably due for a reread at this point. This is about a young woman who is having sort of an existential quarter-life crisis. She's actually very depressed. Her grandmother just died and they weren't so close, but that actually makes her think about their relationship a lot. And she goes to her cabin and she starts living there on her own. And she starts going around the woods and taking photographs of dead animals and the pictures appear on the book. Now, this book is virtually plotless. It's all about character, in a sense, but it's also more about the process and the reflection. That's why it's a line made by walking. The writing, as I remembered, was absolutely immersive, so beautiful, but it's also kind of a downer because she is depressed. I would not really recommend this book to everyone because one, it is very, very slow, and I love those kinds of books, especially when I'm in the mood for them. I feel like they are the literary equivalent of meditating. So like, if you like things like Walden, for example, I think this is actually a really cool book. It's not similar, um, it's not really nature writing, um, but she's interacting with nature, and she is thinking about isolation, and how much more isolated is she really now that she's truly alone versus when he was living in the city. It's also very depressing if you take it that way. I did it. I really, really deeply enjoyed it. I don't remember whether this won the year it was nominated. I don't think so because I think it was nominated the year that Happy by Nicola Baker won, which I have not read. But anyways, I really loved it. The second book I want to talk to you about today is Artful by Alice Smith. Alice Smith is a very experimental writer that I love and I have actually decided to read her novels in publication order. So if you'd like to check out that project, I wrote an entry on my blog about it. So I'll leave the link down below so you can check it out. Artful is so interesting because I've actually seen it both in the non-fiction section and the fiction section, but I think it's fiction. I read it as fiction. It is a novel. This is Rock from the future. Just wanting to clarify something that I really should have checked before filming this video, but I didn't. The reason Artful can't be found in both the fiction and non-fiction sections is that it was delivered as four different lectures, and so each chapter of the novel or section of the book is a different essay. But in my opinion, there really is a story there. I would consider it overall a novel. That's all I wanted to say. Back to the past. So this is a story of a woman I, who has lost a partner. I believe the gender of the speaker is specified, but not the gender of the partner, I think. Or is it the other way around? Anyways, it's not important because once again, it is a meditation on loss and death of someone who is so ingrained in your life. It's somehow very tangible, if that makes sense. 
it's um, about the little things. So I remember um, the narrator is thinking about the books that uh, the partner left behind, the chair. I really liked it. I think if you like a line made by walking, you probably will like this as well. The difference, um, which is not everyone's cup of tea, is that Alice Smith is very literary and intertextual. She loves those references. In Artful specifically, she goes on a lot about Dickens. Not everyone likes that. You say that to me, I'm picking that book up immediately. So, you know, uh, but I really enjoyed it. Not my favorite Alice Smith, though. The next one is my favorite Alice Smith, and it actually won the year it was nominated, which I think was 2014, and it's How to Be Both, which is just brilliant. It is a brilliant novel. It's divided into two sections. One is about a painting in Renaissance Italy, and it's about gender and sexuality at the time. And then the other section is about a girl in modern Cambridge, the 60s so modern-ish for us, has recently lost her mother, so she's still processing that. She's also sort of starting a friendship slash relationship with one of her female classmates. And so she's trying to figure out that, while at the same time she's looking back at her relationship with her mother and she's looking at all these paintings and all these art that they used to share together in search of that bond and in search of that understanding that sometimes eludes us. I think it's actually very accessible. There is a sort of small mystery element. I don't want to say mystery because that sounds like someone dies, but it's kind of something that drives the plot forward in both. So I think it's a really good way of figuring out whether you like Alice Smith's style if you want to try one of her novels, but I actually always recommend her short stories first not important for this video. You've noticed that I said one section and the other section, not which one is first, and that was because half of the books were printed having one section first and then the other, so they are interchangeable and the covers are exactly the same, so you don't really know which one is first, which I think is brilliant. You can read it either way, sort of, but I have read it both ways, and I actually think the way that I read it first is better, which is the modern version first and then the renaissance version just because i think that the renaissance version is much slower and by the time you read the modern you are so invested that the renaissance is really much more interesting i believe there are more um, easter eggs in there that way but if you read the other way that's also really cool and then the modern version reads almost like a prequel so these are three of the goldsmith prize nominees that i read is there any order to this review process no not really but i hope you enjoy it because um i have more goldsmith prize books to review so i hope you like this video because there might be a couple more coming and um if you want to check out the other one that i did I link it down below because there I reviewed um, Beetlebone, Grease is the Thing with Feathers, and The Lesser Bohemians, if I'm not mistaken. So that was it. I hope you liked this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and comment. Have you read any of these books? If not, do any of them tickle your fancy? Or if uh, none of these books are really your thing, just tell me how you feel about experimental fiction in general because I know it's a very divisive subject. So yeah. See you next time!